What is a projector retrofit? All right, well guys, I'm your host who loves headlights the most, and I know that you guys have seen plug and play LED bulbs, plug and play HID kits, but what is a projector retrofit? And that is the question. And today what we're gonna do is we're gonna demo these different options for you. And hopefully by the end, you'll be able to figure out if a projector retrofit makes sense for you as your next headlight upgrade. So the reason that you need a projector retrofit is because you have a halogen reflector based headlight. And by today's standards, the output from these things is trash. Of course, we'll show you what that looks like in this OEM Toyota Tundra headlight. From there, we'll show you what the output looks like from a comparable LED base bulb, a comparable HID kit for reference, and then what we'll do is we'll top it off and we'll show you what the output that you could expect from a bi-xenon projector retrofit will look like. We already know that the output will sell you on it, but from there we've really got to talk about all the options and what's involved in doing a projector retrofit so that you can justify the extra cost, time, labor, and effort in doing it because we know that it's already the best option in terms of a headlight upgrade. So you know a retrofit is the right thing to do, but before you're gonna put this into this, you've gotta remove this. And even though you're gonna remove it, you're obviously gonna to have to put it back on later. So here at TRS, we have a variety of tools and materials to help you do that effectively, both in terms of splitting the headlights apart in the first place and resealing them later. First things first though, is that there are a variety of different kinds of glue that holds headlight housings together. There's permaseal and then there's butyl rubber. People like us love butyl rubber because it's very soft and pliable once heated. So you put the headlight in the oven, opens up like butter, very, very easy. All right, if you have a permaseal headlight, something like a headlight on a newer Ford F-150 or a lot of domestic vehicles, for example, you're gonna need to use something a little bit more burly in terms of splitting that headlight apart. Here at TRS, we have this stuff from Morimoto. This is called Permatrator. And it's actually a solvent that you can put around the outside perimeter of the headlight that helps to break down that per, uh, permaseal glue. So it'll help you dissolve that, split it apart a little bit easier. For those of you guys who have butyl rubber in your headlights, that's super easy. All you've got to do is put the headlight in the oven, preheated 270 degrees Fahrenheit, bake that thing for seven to eight minutes. From there, the glue around the outside perimeter will be nice and soft and you can pry it apart very easily with something like this, which is a pry bar. We sell these here at TRS or the seal splitter, also available at TRS. Put that all around the edge, basically just pop it open and uh, that will allow you access to the inside of the headlight so that you can start to do your thing installing the projector. So you've got the headlight lens off. From there, you gotta have something to do a little bit of modification inside. You're gonna put a shroud on top of the projector. Sometimes you've gotta make a little bit of extra clearance with the reflector. Of course, using a projector like the Morimoto Mini Series makes that as easy as possible, but it's still gonna be very helpful for you to have a rotary tool on hand, like a Dremel. These we actually do not carry at TRS, but we do have a variety of different um, tools and bits that you can use that are perfect for the job, such as these cutting wheels sanding drums, etc. Last but not least, you've got to reseal the headlight. Again, at TRS, we have a variety of different things to help you out with that. Everything from the Morimoto compression clips to this, which is the, um, the uh, clamp like a champ tool, which will go all the way around the edge and help you clamp that headlight completely shut without prying itself back apart. And then of course there's glue. You gotta have some extra sealant for when you reseal the headlight. The Morimoto Retro Rubber is basically industry standard across this entire niche in terms of what people are using for that. It's available in both gray and black, which of course just depends on what the headlight was originally sealed with. And uh, it is a perfect, cheap insurance option to help make sure that after you reseal this headlight, you don't get any moisture back in it all said and done. Let me uh, just give you a little bit of this, like a little Vanna White action. Price is right, girl. Now it's time for the fun part. Let's do a little shopping. We're gonna start with the bi -Xenon projectors because that is the heart of your retrofit. So we have tons of different options here at TRS. There's tons of different options on the market. OEM, aftermarket, 2.5 inch, three inch, left-hand drive, right-hand drive. There's so many things here that'll boggle your mind. Let me just set it straight for you guys, okay? For all intents and purposes, we're gonna use the Morimoto Mini D2S 5.0 projector. This is basically industry standard for ease of installation and the actual amount of light output and quality that it produces. Next to that, most popular option, Mini H1 7.0, also a bi-xenon projector, just a little bit smaller in size. 
In terms of what you got to know though, 2.5 inch or 3 inch lens. It really comes down to the amount of space inside of your headlight housing. Do you have a massive headlight like the Tundra one that we're working on? Or do you have something small like a Honda Civic? It really just depends on the geometry that you're working with there. Just depends on the diameter of the lens, really. Left hand drive or right hand drive? Well, if you're here in the United States, you're gonna, you're gonna wanna use left hand drive. That really just designates the beam pattern and how the beam rises up into the right side so that you... iPhone killed it. <laughs> Left hand drive is what you're going to want to use if you're here in the United States. That's basically the beam pattern that is compatible with our traffic pattern where you drive on the right side of the road, oncoming traffic drives on the left side of the road. What this is allows you to do is aim the headlights up as high as possible without glaring oncoming traffic, which gives you, as the driver, the benefit of maximum distance visibility, again, without glaring the oncoming traffic. On the other side of the spectrum, countries like United Kingdom or Japan or Australia, you actually want the beam pattern to rise up and to the left so that it is higher on the side of the road that you're driving on and again, limits glare to oncoming traffic. OEM or aftermarket, this is a very, very common debate, especially among people who are really into this kind of thing. Well, if you asked me 10 years ago, I probably would have said OEM. I was an OEM kind of guy because the performance of those projectors, especially with the clear lens swap, is really hard to beat. These days, it's really not so much the case. If you're really looking to pack a lot of punch into your headlight, you can do it with an aftermarket projector like the Morimoto Mini Series, no doubt about it. Honestly speaking, these things already have a clear lens, the cutoff lines are already tuned, the intensity is bright, they're super wide, there really is no other choice. And the fact of the matter is that these projectors are the only ones that are gonna have a threaded mounting shaft on the back. And that is key, especially if you're doing a first time retrofit because it makes it so, so, so much easier to do. You don't have to do tons of cutting inside your headlight, tons of alignment, very easy and turnkey to actually do a retrofit when you've got that convenient mounting shaft on the back. So you've picked out your projectors and now you gotta power them up. So you're gonna need a set of power supplies, AKA HID ballast. Now, in my opinion, there's really two main choices that you've gotta make here. OEM or aftermarket, 35 watt or 50 watt. OEM, great ballast, you know, good stuff used by Toyota, Lexus, Infiniti. We also carry those here at TRS. It's a good ballast, but it's not waterproof. And you want something that's definitely waterproof so that when you put them in your engine bay, you know that they're not gonna die prematurely because they've just gotten wet. Now with an aftermarket ballast such as a Morimoto or a Hilux, which are the most popular options here from TRS, those things are completely waterproof. You can put them anywhere under the hood and they're not gonna have any issues with that. So for me, the vote goes for aftermarket. I like the Morimoto ones because they're completely modular with different outputs. You can have an amp or a D2S igniter depending on what projector you're using. All the wiring input and output wise is completely plug and play and they're small, compact and very reliable. <laughs> Now with that, when you look at aftermarket ballast, you have your choice of 35 watt or 50 watt. 35 watt is really what's industry standard because all original equipment HID applications use 35 watt ballast. Now bear in mind, even though that's the lesser of the two, 35 watt ballasts are still gonna pump out more than 3000 lumens easy out of a respectable HID setup. So that's tons of extra light output compared to your stock halogen. And of course, even compared to the LED kits, et cetera, out there. So still plenty of light output for you. Now, if you wanna pump every last lumen out of that retrofit, you can opt for a 50 watt high power ballast at the expense of slightly more heat from the ballast and thus a little bit less lifespan. They generally are warranted for a little bit less too. Projectors, check. Ballast, check. Now we gotta shop for some HID bulbs. Now again, you've got so many different options when it comes to HID bulbs. The projectors that we already picked out for this retrofit are gonna be the D2S 5.0s. There's tons of different options for D2S. Philips, Osram, Morimoto, you name it. We got it all here. Question is which one's right for you. You can spend anywhere from 50 bucks to $200 on a set of D2S bulbs. And in terms of the performance, I mean, you're gonna find a little bit of extra luminosity there at the top end. But in my opinion, I think it really comes down to do you want a lot of bang for the buck like something with a Morimoto XB bulb, or do you just go and want to go top of the line, price not included, doesn't even matter, and just go for something like a Philips XV2? For me, I think that the bang for the buck is the way to go, so I always rock the standard option, Morimoto XB 5500K kind of guy. The other thing that you really want to consider is the color of the bulbs. Do you want something that's a 4300K, 
that's going to be a warm white light? Or do you want something that's a 5500K, a pure white light, or even a 6500K, which is going to give you that slight tinge of blue? Those are the things that you really need to consider. We've got all the options for you. And if you really want to see all the details, watch some of our other videos that really gets into the nitty gritty when you're comparing all of the different options. Shrouds. If we want to talk about options, there are so many freaking designs of shrouds that your mind will blow instantly when you're trying to figure out what's right for you. To make this simple, guys, pick out what you like the look of. Do you want something chrome? Do you want something black? How do you like the look of it? Ultimately, it's just going to cover up the projector and the hardware used to install it in your headlight. So what do you like the look of? Now, you do have to consider sometimes that some shrouds are bigger than others, so just look at the size of your headlight relative to the size and the dimensions of the shroud that we list on our website and figure out what's gonna, what's gonna fit in your housing. That said, it is not uncommon to have to trim the shrouds a little bit. That's where the Dremel tool is gonna come in handy, so we'll leave it to you from there to make the choice. So we got the shrouds figured out, and now we're gonna look at the last thing, the finishing touches that a lot of you guys like to add into your retrofits. I'm talking about LED halos, RGB, switchback, LED strips, demon eyes, all that fun stuff. Again, we've got it all here in every different size, shape, and form, you name it at TRS. So RGB or switchback, for that is the question. Well, if you want some kind of halos, which are those illuminated rings that go around the projector in the retrofit, do you want them to light up white and then change to amber with the turn signal? That's a switchback. Do you want to be color changing with an app on your phone and have any different color you want? That's going to be an RGB type setup. Do you want a demon eye? What is a demon eye? A demon eye is a LED light that actually goes inside of the projector and that will actually illuminate the backside of the projector lens so that it glows during the day or night, you name it. Those are also very commonly found in either single colors or RGB. Now we could really have some fun and I can start talking your face off about wiring, but wiring really isn't all that sexy or exciting. So the fact is when it comes to that, you just gotta pick the wire harness that works for you in its original equipment size. So if you've got an H4 halogen bulb, you pick an H4 harness. If you got an H11 halogen bulb, you pick an H11 harness. Pretty much simple as that. But the one thing that I do wanna to touch on is lens etching because for retrofits, it's all about personalizing the look. Obviously the performance is one thing, but retrofitting gives you the ability to really customize what it is that you've got going on. So if you've got your own artwork or you wanna actually use one of our pre-existing templates, we can actually custom engrave the lenses on your projectors according to your taste. It's something that we do in house and is an awesome way to add extra personal touch to your retrofit. Even my man Paul Walker agrees. You saw the output from the halogen. You saw the output from the plug and play HIDs, the plug and play LEDs, and of course the projector retrofit. The things that lighting wet dreams are made of and what put TRS on the map way back in 2005, but is still relevant today. Now we understand there's so many different options out there that can be confusing. And even after watching this video, if you still don't get it, we have an entire group of customer service guys here at TRS to help you out.